He survived. <laughs> okay, so that's been fixed. That's been fixed. Okay. So the topic for today's middle game lesson is, again, material imbalances. Okay. So we have multiple different types of material imbalances. Okay. For you to understand what a material imbalance is, is basically just the same amount of points on the board, except that the material is not the same. So a typical material imbalance would be a knight and two pawns versus a rook. It's still five points versus five points, but of course it's not the same material. It's just a different type of material. Okay, another example. Ooh, I see I am having a little bit of lag, but anyway. Hello there, Elf and I. So another example would be, let's say, two bishops versus a rook and a pawn. That's another classic example of a material imbalance. Just, I'm trying to see why I'm, I'm having a little bit of lag. Well, maybe not. Maybe it's not really anything serious. But um, since, since last night, somehow the internet's been giving me a little bit of poop. But it seems to be a bit better today. Anyway, let me just continue. So in today's example, we are going to look at three pieces versus a queen. Okay, so three pieces obviously worth nine points and a queen worth nine points. So it's a typical example where we're looking at another type of material imbalance. Okay, just let me know if the sound is okay and if everything is fine. Um, it looks okay, I am not quite sure. So before I start, thank you Raj. So before I start, I'm going to move over to a different scene that I have created now for all of these things. And this is called the Coach's Corner. Hello there. Aww. Danny Blitz. Nurse. Thanks, Danny Blitz. Thanks for the sub, man. And welcome to the fam fam. Cool. Um, there was a little bit of lag now just now, but that was probably just because of the Hello Nurse sub and stuff. Okay. So when you look at the stuff I have over there, <laughs> you can see that I talk about the list of things that we want to think about when we have to make a decision like sacrificing our queen for three pieces. Okay. What you want to know... <laughs> oh, I, I don't remember Danny Blitz, but thanks anyway. I'm not going to complain about it. <laughs> Aw, well that makes me very, very happy then. Then this better be a good middle game lesson, right? Okay, so the first thing that we want to do when we look at uh, sacrificing a queen for three pieces is, first of all, the activity of the three pieces. Okay, if the three pieces are going to work well together and they're going to be very active, then it's usually a good idea. Another thing that the three pieces need is weaknesses to attack. A weak king or even just a weak pawn that they can target and attack is usually a pretty good idea then for you to sacrifice a queen for three pieces okay or well, it's not really technically a sacrifice right but to take the material imbalance okay there are cases of course when it's not so great okay and we'll look at that as a, the next example when the pieces are trapped in behind their own pawns or hemmed in by your opponent's pawns and they don't have activity then the pieces are not as good as the queen okay and the less pieces on the board the easier it is for the queen to become strong uh, over the three pieces. Okay, so you'll see I have a little uh, tip as well here. My little tip for you when you're thinking about sacrificing is that don't just think about the material as, oh, okay, I am down material because I'm down two points or I'm up for three points or whatever. Look at what the actual material on the board is doing. That is very important. Okay, because if you just have like multiple pieces around his king swarming, then you can be down a queen and a rook. It doesn't matter because you're mating the guy. High extreme ways. So don't always just think about material as black and white. Okay, some material can be worth more in certain positions and obviously worth less in other positions. Okay, so we start with our position here on the board. White's down a pawn. Okay, but... White has a little bit of compensation because of the pressure he has on this diagonal, okay? And hey VPN, and of course the pawn on d5 is easy to blockade and is isolated as well. Okay, oh, sorry, I should probably change back to the scene, huh? <laughs> sorry, let me just get back to the board. Here we go, back to the board. There we go. Yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it, I got it. Took me a, a long lifetime, but I did it, I did it. 
just played my first slow 15 minute game since I started, but I've been watching a YouTube series for beginners. That's good, Danny Blitz. That's good. Play longer games. Always. Okay? Always play longer games because you get to actually practice proper chess games. Okay. So here, as I pointed out, we have pressure on the G file, even though black is up a pawn. Okay. And here white makes a very, very important position. You can't see comments? What comments? What are we talking about? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You mean you can't see the comments down, down there next to it? Yeah, that's on purpose, VPN. <laughs> the comments are just for me. Yes, the comments is just for me, baby. Because, of course, this is like a proper preparation, okay? Yeah, 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 VPN. Yeah, exactly. I changed the scene. Yeah, yeah. So let me just go back there real quick. I'll show you back here. So this is just the coach's corner as I created it. Okay, so that you can see my tips for explaining the different type of things that we're looking at in the current position. Oh, okay, okay, I see, I see. Okay, so again, as I pointed out here, the three minor pieces are usually good in middle game positions as long as they have activity and something to attack. Okay, that is one of the main things that we're going to look at here. And of course, a typical tip when you are looking at sacrificing material is that you want to just look at the quality of your pieces. Okay, so let me go back here. So back to the position. So white makes a very drastic decision here to sacrifice his queen for three pieces. How does that happen? White plays bishop takes f6. And now after knight a4, he has some problems to deal with, right? Because otherwise there's now two attackers and only one defender. Okay. But white goes now and says, bam, I'll take this bishop. You take my knight and I take here. Okay, so now again we stop and we take stock of what has just happened. Okay, so we can quickly see that we have three pieces versus a queen. Black, however, has an extra pawn as well in the position. But, first of all, there this is weak, this is weak, and he does have a weak king position as well. Because our bishop on g7 is a monster. Okay, if we can blockade this pawn with a knight, and we can untangle our pieces so that we can get our rook to either one of the open files, then white will be in very good position to attack this pawn as well. Knight goes here, the attacks, we can attack here. Okay, so we have multiple ways of attacking that pawn. Okay. So, that is basically why white decided to go for the sacrifice here. Okay. But... Winning the game is still not that easy. Okay. So we're going to look at now how he continues the game. Black first plays queen a4. Okay. Makes complete sense because he's attacking the pawn. Uh, any other moves here, by the way, is not very, very easy to play for black. Because black needs to try and somehow constrict or obstruct white's pieces. Hey, Angel Cake, sorry about yesterday. I know, I know, it was a bit of a problem, but I am back. You can see the internet's fine now. I don't know what happened last night. Hey, Lucifer. I still love that name, <laughs> Lucifer. It's a funny name. Okay, so Queen A4 gets played to attack the pawn on B4. Okay, because it limits your options of defending the pawn. You can't lose the pawn because then his pawn becomes, both become passed. Okay. Angelic Jake, sorry, man. Sorry, 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 my bad. Okay. Queen a2 would also be not bad, Alpha Knight. Queen a2 would pretty much do the same job, I guess. I'm still going to play here, though. Okay. Still going to play bishop c3. So regardless of what you play, bishop c3 happens. Okay. So white still has to untangle. But of course, you have to remember that this pawn is hanging as well. So be a little bit careful of the move queen a2, okay? Uh, Lucifer, not, not today. I'm not going to be playing viewers today. I will be playing viewers tomorrow, Lucifer. Okay. So he played queen a4 instead, which is the best move because it defends and attacks at the same time. There we go. That took me a long time to do. Okay. Now bishop c3 has to be played to defend the pawn. It's the only move to defend the pawn. Okay. Now he plays queen a3 to attack the bishop. 
Can someone find me a slightly better move for black here instead of queen a3? A slightly better move to attack the bishop on c3. Queen b3 would be a very bad idea. <laughs> okay, Danny Blitz, good, and JCSI. Hey, JCSI, welcome to the show, by the way, if you're new. Yeah, so queen c2, good. Attacking here and putting some pressure down here as well. Okay, so queen c2 would be better, okay? Now bishop d4 would have been played. And after bishop c6, at least, protecting the pawn, of course, because there is a cheapo, Okay. Now, after bishop e3, it is important for white to untangle the pieces so he can move this bishop. And after bishop d7, the idea would be to untangle the bishop now. Maybe something like this, a bishop here, attacking this pawn, etc. Okay. Well, you are very welcome to the show, JCS. Uh, you know, for all the new guys, if you're new to the show currently, do me a big favor and follow me on Twitch as well. So follow Chess Doctors on Twitch as well. Of course, if you follow me on Twitch, then you will be able to see uh, the schedule as well. Okay. So this would have been a little bit better for black because white still has to struggle to untangle his pieces. But Queen A3 was played. Now... Let's see if you guys can find the correct move for white here. It's not an easy move to find. It's probably counterintuitive. But it makes a lot of sense because all you want is your pieces to work together. Okay, that is what makes three pieces strong. If they're working together, then they are very, very strong. So let's see if you guys can find the right move for white here. Rook a1 loses your bishop. Be careful. So Lucifer, of course, the bishop's being attacked, so you can't do that, okay? So if you go here, it's just going to take your queen, your bishop. Yeah, exactly, Angelic Jake. Okay, Raj says knight b1. Okay, and it makes a lot of sense, right? Thanks for the follow, JC. And welcome, welcome, welcome once again. Okay, so knight b1 is an awkward move. It's a weird move. Uh, Elf and I, again, the queen is attacking the bishop, so if you move here, he just takes your bishop. Not a great idea. You don't want to lose material. Okay. So knight b1 is weird. It's a weird move. I understand that it's a weird move. But the knight's defended. Okay. The knight's defending here. And the knight is attacking the queen as well. It's important for the bishop to stay here to defend the pawn. So somehow white is defending all these pieces quite nicely. Okay. So the queen goes to a2. Okay, now of course you can't take the pawn because check, and then he takes here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's a, it's an evil little move, knight b1. Okay, so you cannot take the pawn yet. Okay, so how do we continue as white? Where is the next correct square for us to go to, go to with the white pieces? The knight's doing a great job here. The bishop's doing a great job, and the rook currently is pinned to the piece. So how do we continue? <laughs> King h2 is not a great idea. Remember, there is a double attack, uh, Danny Blitz. There's a double attack and only one defender. Okay. So we got to be a little bit careful. Still have to be careful about that. Okay. King f1 is definitely an option, and knight d4, you, you mean, Elf and I. It's not e4. e4 is over here. So you meant d4. I understand what you're saying, Elf and I. Yeah, so knight d4 is slightly more accurate right now. Okay? So you go knight d4 because it protects here. Come on, I can't click on the right squares today, apparently. Okay? So that protects everything. So knight d4 is nice. It blockades the pawn. And attacks here and defends here. Multi, multi-purpose move. Okay? It's very, very pretty when your pieces can do more than one thing. Okay? Except, of course, if they're overloaded. So you have to be careful to not overload your pieces. Hey, Atomic Player, what's up? Okay. So, 94 is an excellent example of a good move. 
because of course it's attacking and defending and of course blockading the pawn at the same time. Now, black plays f6. How does white continue now? Yeah, Angelic J, King F1 is probably okay as well. I do agree with you. King F1 is probably okay as well. Probably. Yeah, Artyom, I agree with you. Uh, not such a great idea. By the way, if King F1 here... Could we maybe get fancy a little bit here? Maybe we could play something like, like d4 maybe? Ah, that's also true. Yes, you're right. Uh, and he can't, exactly, exactly. King f1, then he can take here and here. Yeah, that's correct. Good job, good job. Exactly, yeah. So that's the problem, you see. So your pieces are still a little bit awkward. So you need to be very, very careful with how you continue in the position. You need to make sure you don't lose anything. Okay, so knight d4 is correct, yes. Just make sure you defend everything, right? Now if he takes here, of course, you just take with a knight and it's still defending the rook, uh, the, the knight on b1. Okay, excellent. f6 gets played. How do we continue? How do we continue for white? Yeah, it's Aniket, yeah. Uh, that's Tushar Kamda is Aniket. I just know who he really is. I know who he really is, children. So I still call him Aniket. <laughs> so how do we continue for white here? <laughs> Not so secret anymore. Again, get the right squares, Angelic Jake. Get the right squares. No, Elf and I, again, you cannot play Bishop takes B5 because he takes check and then he takes your knight. So you cannot take that pawn. you got to take your time. Okay, good. I like Artyom's plan. He wants to go put his knight on C5. Okay. Perfect. So knight D2. Okay. The trick here, of course, is now that is being blocked and your knight is defending here anyway. So if he goes and attacks your bishop, you can also defend it with other pieces. Okay. If he plays something like, let's say, queen here, what do we play? So how do, what do we play now? If he plays queen a3, of course. He doesn't, but that's not the point. Yeah, you can play knight 2 to boo 3. No, you cannot play rook c1, moopy loopy. Rook c1 is bad because the queen, queen attacks. So don't play rook c1. It's a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, you could play knight here, but you can also play here, by the way. <laughs> I think you can take it. Attacking the queen. And of course, the knight defends the, the bishop. Okay, so you can just take the pawn as well. You are more than welcome to take the pawn as well. Okay. Angelic Jake. Yes, you did say that. Sorry, my bad. My bad, Angelic Jake. Knight takes b5. Correct. Okay, that's not what he plays though. Okay, he plays queen a8. How do we continue now? Of course, queen a8 does not stop us from doing what we had planned to do. So, what was the plan? What was the plan, my children? Um, no, it doesn't, Aniket. Doesn't need at all. Okay. Again, let me quickly move over to the here. Okay. So look at the overview of what we are doing. Okay. So look at the things that I am telling you here. If you just follow these tips for the specific position at hand, then the position is easy to play. That's the point. You need to understand the knowledge that if you have three pieces versus a queen, 
you need activity for your pieces and you need a weakness to attack. If you have all of these things and your pieces are working well together, then the queen is crappy versus the three pieces. Okay, so in most middle game positions, the three pieces are actually better than the queen. As long as they work together, have active squares to go to, and have something to attack. Okay, simple. Then you don't have to complicate matters. You don't have to make things hard for yourselves. Okay? Uh, Malek is not really true. You don't need super, super um, precision. Okay? So, let me move back to the board here. Okay? So... All we're doing is we're just continuously putting our pieces on the right squares. Okay. So, knight goes to b2. Okay. Now, of course, we have the rook move here. Okay. I don't think so, Aniket. I find it really, really easy. I don't know what you guys are talking about. You guys are going nuts all over the place. Oh, you wanted to take the pawn, yeah. Take your time. You don't have to take that pawn. Exactly, exactly. That's correct, Z Fox. You have to just be coordinated with your pieces. So just take your time. Okay. So knight goes to b2 and black plays bishop c6. Oh, c8, I mean. Now he plays rook a1 and rook a7 gets played. What does white play now? What does white play now? <laughs> no, Aniket, Aniket, I've just, I've practiced it. That's all, Aniket. Again, I have just practiced the principles of how to play with the three pieces. Let's see. Knight a5, rook a5. Good idea. Thank you. Artyom and Aniket says, do not exchange pieces. And that's correct, by the way. You do not want to exchange pieces. Why? Can anyone tell me why you don't want to exchange your rook off the board? Let's see. Let's see if the Russians or the Indians know why you don't want to exchange your rook off the board. And again, it's a very common principle. If you understand the principle, if you know it and you understand it, then you can apply it. So why do we not want to trade off rooks? There we go. Aniket remembers exactly. <laughs> it is a play coordinating piece. Okay. So that is a very important thing to remember. Pyromantics, thanks for the follow. I'm assuming there's a lot of you guys that are new to the sh to the to the channel. And watching in the background, okay? Just give me a follow on Twitch as well. I would be very, very much appreciative. Okay, so yes, the play coordinating piece is the important part here. The rook or a queen counts as a play coordinating piece. So white just plays rook c1. Nice and simple, nothing fancy, nothing crazy. Okay, so yeah, JC, that's, that's good. Then you're learning something new, okay? And that's the whole objective of this, is for you guys to learn something. So a play coordinating piece is a rook or a queen that helps the smaller pieces to coordinate easier, okay? So if you're in black situation here, you want to trade off the play coordinating pieces because then your queen suddenly becomes stronger against the three pieces, okay? Good, Aniket, good, excellent. UT Plover, thank you so much as a UTP lover, maybe. Thank you so much for the follow. Well, it's black to play now, right? So black plays rook a3. How do we continue? Rook a2, knight a5. Okay, wait, 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 wait. You want to go rook a2. Rook a2 now. Are we talking about this specific position? Z Fox, what position? Before you go on a tangent <laughs> with uh, with complete like moves and stuff, where what position? In this current position? Is there that way you would like me to look at rook a2? Okay. So rook a2, I still take here. 
I don't see how your rook a2 does much. The point is now I have a pass pawn. Good luck stopping that thing. Good luck. Bishop here, here, here. They all just keep on running, man. Yeah, these are, Aniket, these are the moves that Black actually did play. Okay, these are the moves that Black did play. So, yeah. Well, okay, you're trapping the rook, but how do you attack this rook? Well, knight a5, bishop goes here. And how do you actually attack this rook? That's the problem. If you can't attack it, then is it really trapped? And then after bishop here, bishop here, I go here again maybe. I don't know, it's not necessarily that easy to attack it. Not necessarily. But okay, I mean, you know, that's obviously an option as well. But that's why he doesn't play rook a2, does he? He plays rook a3 instead. Okay. Of course, z-fox, okay, okay. So, you know, that could definitely work, z-fox. But what if he doesn't play rook a2? <laughs> so it's all good and well to see that he that that it would be trapped if he's on a2 but of course that means he doesn't have to go there okay so rook a3 what do we play as white how do we continue Hey, Naka fan! Hello there. And yes, Naka fan, you get the prize here. You just take on b5. I mean, that's the next threat. I, st I still don't understand, Anikit, why this position is not easy to play. It's so easy to play. Black can do nothing. White can do whatever he feels like. How is this hard? Yeah, but the threat is not very important here, Aniket, because it's so easy for you for everything to defend each other. Okay. So how does how does black continue here? Find me moves for black now. Not if you're not stupid. <laughs> yeah, we don't have to move the knight. Exactly, exactly. We don't have to move anything. Let's just keep on making it easy. Exactly, Melek, exactly. Black's coordination is really bad. White's pieces are defending very, very nice. Yes, white's pieces are working well together. And now this pawn is a monster. Because you can easily help it up the board. You know, it's so easy to help this pawn up the board here. They just continue flowing. The rook can even go in behind. And eventually you're going to mash through there. Yeah, exactly. Hey, turkey farm. Hello. So yeah, so black page bishop f5, by the way, in this position. Bishop c8, c6 happens. Queen goes to d8, defending the pawn. And now he just plays knight c5. Because again, the pieces are fantastic. That's defended, that's defended, that's defended, that's defended. <laughs> Everything is defended. The only piece is not defending is the rook, but you can't attack it. Okay, you cannot attack it. That's maybe true, Aniket. Maybe you're just tired, yeah. Yeah, of course you wouldn't take on f5. Okay. So he continued playing, by the way. He played bishop e4. And now b5 happened. Good luck stopping that pawn. Yeah, exactly, Moopy by Loopy. You can probably just resign. He played queen here. But after knight here, queen a7, b6, and of course, boom, boom. Okay. Nice and easy. If you, by the way, try and play this move. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Aniket. Okay. If he tries to play this, the knight would just take here. Rook takes. King goes to h2. And again, good luck stopping this pawn. 
Okay, like rook d1 or something, you just go knight d7 anyway. Okay, rook tags, you play b6. Rook here, you play here. And of course, you just win the end game. Okay. Uh, is this what is called like a zugzwang? Not quite, no. Danny Blitz, zugzwang is when any move that black makes automatically weakens or, you know, loses for him in the position. This wasn't automatic losses. It's just that you don't have any actual good moves to make any progress. Okay. Yeah, so Danny Blitz, it's basically a case of where any move that he makes, makes his position worse. That's the technical definition of a Zugzwang. No matter what he moves, his position gets worse. Here, it's not exactly the same because he doesn't worsen his position, but of course he doesn't have anything active to play. Okay. Cool. So this is a simple example of where the three pieces are obviously just very, very strong here in against the queen. Okay. Because they coordinate well together. As long as the pieces coordinate well together and they can attack diff uh, easy weaknesses, in this case b5 was the obvious weakness. And of course with the pass pawn, the pawn just runs up the board. Okay. So as long as you have those things, I will quickly show them again here. Go over to the coach's corner. So again, as long as the three pieces have activity and targets to attack okay then of course play coordinating pieces are important as well okay when there's less pieces on the board then the queen becomes stronger especially if there's no rook or queen for white and i.e the play coordinating piece okay and then as i always point out to you guys if you look at the little tip down there bling 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 bling, bling okay then you will see that I mentioned that don't just look at material from a white and black point of view. Okay? It's not just, oh, I have eight points, he has nine points. Look at what the pieces are doing. It's very, very important to look at what they are doing. Okay. Okay, let's move over to our next example here. Quickly go into our middle games. We will move to our next example. Okay, this comes from a complete game here. Now, again, as I point out here, if the pieces are not well coordinated and do not have good squares to go to, the position can often favor white. Okay, so now we're going to look at an example of that. How much time do we have? Okay, so game starts with e4 c5 and this is an opening line by the way you guys can have you can go and have a look at this if you want as black knight goes here knight goes to c6 pawn takes takes knight f6 okay sorry he plays e6 first knight c3 and queen c7 inviting if you have time and your schedule later could you take a quick look at a game i played i'm a bit unsure playing more um daddy blitz do me a favor Join on Discord if you're not there yet. Here is the link. Join on Discord. And if you want me to have a look at a game, you can just throw it in the viewer games channel that we have in Discord. Okay. That's the easiest way because then I will obviously look at the game because I even do shows on it as well. Okay, so queen c7 here, by the way, invites knight b5. So it gets played, of course. <laughs> he goes here, and queen b8. Now bishop e3 gets played. Some cheeky, cheeky tactics all over the place. Okay. And after a6, he plays bishop b6. Okay. Okay. Now he plays pawn takes. And after knight takes, there is a big threat here of winning the rook back. Okay. Which will also create a different type of um, imbalance. Okay. So something like bishop check, which is what happens. C3 and bishop here to protect a7. He goes knight check anyway. And now the in the in the game, it was played queen takes c7. Getting the three pieces against a queen. Okay. 
Yes, it is a theoretical line turkey farm. But it's just another example to show you how we can get into a typical position where we have three pieces versus a queen. Okay. So, now we can go back, by the way. There is a different material imbalance that could happen as well. King e7 is possible to get played. And after bishop check, king d8, knight takes, and queen takes, we have two pieces versus a rook and a pawn. So now we have a different type of imbalance in the position. Let me just check something. Huh, that's not on, is it? Where is it on? I don't know. I can't tell. Just give me a second. I just want to see if I can turn on my my fan, my external fan. I don't know why it's not working. Oh well, whatever. If uh, if if the stream suddenly dies, then it means that my computer exploded. Okay. <laughs> hey, GG Hellas, what's up? Yeah, exactly. Bishop Bishop F8, right? I mean, these positions looks very 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 awkward here. Exactly. Okay, so let me go back just to show you what happened in the actual position. So after knight b5, he decided to sacrifice his queen. Now, again, in general, the three pieces are better than a queen in a middle game. Okay, that is a general assumption. Okay, the problem becomes... The problem becomes when the pieces do not have active squares to go to. Okay. So the game continues here, queen g4, attacking the pawn, and after g6, he plays bishop d3, knight g7, sorry, a little bit quick there, knight g7, white castles, and black plays castles. Okay, now white plays a4, because white wants to start obstructing the squares where the pieces can go to for black. Yeah, exactly. So it's still a long way to go for us to get all these pieces to good squares. And if white can prevent that, then white is definitely better in this position. Okay. Uh, knight e5, high stethoscopes. Knight e5 doesn't make much sense, by the way, because after queen here, what are you going to do? You're going to take it? That just helps. And f4 now gives me a tempo as well. Okay. Uh, f5 might be a little bit too risky as well. So instead of, you say instead of knight e7, f5, but then you open up the position. I just take it. Opening up the position could be tricky. You could be looking for a lot of trouble because you're still very underdeveloped. You know what I mean? Your pieces are still in weird places. Okay. So you have to be careful of these situations. You want the G file, but that doesn't work, right? So, okay, I guess he has this. Okay. So there are still cheeky tricks, but now check, let's say, instead. Yeah, no, but no, 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 but you can't play here. Yeah, so you could stop that, but still. Queen check here, and now what? You know what I mean? Your pieces are weirdly placed still. <laughs> okay, so it's probably a little bit awkward. You, Z Fox, your objective is to activate your pieces as quickly as possible, okay? Yeah, there's a lot of principles, JC. There's a lot of different principles. And if you can remember them and apply them to the right positions, then you're always going to be in good shape. Okay. So, okay, the game continues. Knight here, castles, castles, and a4. Now, this is a critical point. Black plays a very, very passive move here. What is the correct move for black to play here? Let's see if you guys can spot it. What is the correct move for black to play? Just give me a quick second, I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. 
JC, I like it. It makes a complete amount of sense, doesn't it? D5. It's simple, okay? We don't need to do anything crazy, funky, fancy. You know, you want to control some squares in the center, and you want to obviously try and open up the board for your bishop. Okay? Yeah, knight e5 just doesn't do anything. You, you, you know, I go here and I have f4 as a tempo. Doesn't seem, because you don't want to take. Less pieces on the board, the easier it gets for the queen. Okay? So just remember the rules. Here, I'll put them down again. There's the rules. <laughs> okay? So, of course, if we are the person with the three pieces, we obviously want active squares. We want our pieces to be able to attack weaknesses. Okay? And we want to keep the play coordinating pieces. Okay? If we are white, if we were the person with the queen, then we want to disrupt the flow of the pieces. We want to prevent them from going to good squares. Okay? And if we can trade off play coordinating pieces, it's usually a good idea as well. Okay? Hey, Liam Chess. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the position. And d5 makes a lot of sense. Okay. We just jam d5. Because, of course, if you take, you're just going to help me to open up for my bishop. Okay. And if you don't take, then, of course, at least I have options now of stacking, playing f5 and e5. So, like, in a little example, let's say you just play a random move. I take. Let's say you take queen takes i can play f5 and i can play e5 now suddenly my bishop will finally get out and i can hopefully start trying to put pressure on the position okay so here is what happened in the position after a4 black plays d6 okay with the obvious idea of e5 okay now white just plays queen e2 of course Queen's going to drop back, right? And now he played bishop d7. Yeah, exactly. That's also true, uh, Angelic. But, I mean, okay, you know, if, if, if he can't attack them, then it's perfectly okay as well, Angelic. Perfectly acceptable if he can't attack them. Remember, it's only going to open up this diagonal. This one is still closed. So your king sits on g7 and nothing can ever attack it because you don't have any pieces that can attack that diagonal. Okay. So it's not a big issue. Okay, so bishop d7. Again, a fairly passive. Exactly. Thank you, Liam Ches. Too passive. Right? It's just a bit too passive. Yeah, I agree, Liam Ches. Exactly. And this gives white enough time to put a lot of clamping down uh, on the queen side. So white plays b4 now. Okay? Clamping down squares here. Bishop covers these, and the pawn covers those. Okay. Now he plays rook f to c8. And now a5 happens. So again, clamping down the squares while the bishop covers those. Okay, so he's just continuously focusing on clamping down on all the squares to make it hard for black to find good squares for his pieces. Okay. Of course, the knight on e5 looks fantastic, but f4 just chases it away. And now the bishop has no square here because all the squares are covered as well. Okay. Well, you must remember, Angelic. Okay. Exactly, Angelic, Jake. That's the point of the pawns. Okay. So it looks a bit scary, but that's the point of the pawns. The pawns go forward to him in the black pieces. They, they make them, they combine them nice. It's like a like a sheepdog just chasing the, the, the cows into a nice little area to hem them into the specific place. That is what White is doing here because he understands what needs to be done. Okay. White finally, a uh, black finally plays d5. But now it's a bit late. Okay. It's a little bit late here. How does White continue in this position now? Let's see if you guys, how sharp you guys are here. How does white continue in this position now? I like it. I, I'm glad you like that one, Turkey Farm. I, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> well, you have, to, you have to remember that I have a sheepdog, so <laughs> I've seen it. You know what I mean? I've seen it. That's that's a little bit hasty, Z Fox. That's a little bit hasty. Before you want to do that, Z Fox, before you want to attack on the king side, you have to make sure that you have black's pieces 
completely clamped down. That's that's exactly what happens, JCS. That's exactly what happens. Hmm. You cannot play B5 because you can just take it. You can take on A5, right? So if you play B5, you can take on A5. So, nope. No, 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 no. B5 is terrible. Don't play B5, guys. Come on. Come on. Don't be, don't be dumb now. Don't lose your pieces here. <laughs> Not quite yet. Not quite yet. Z Fox? Not quite yet. I'm going to give you guys a hint though. These pawns are very strong. So if we can get rid of this guy and this guy, then those pawns are pass pawns. And they, and they run. They just go up the board. They just say, hey, pieces, I know you don't like pawns. Pawns are killing you. Thank you, Liam Ches. Thank you. Okay, turkey farm. I like it. Okay, why don't you like it, Turkey Farm? Why are you against A6? Why did you want to play it and why are you against it? Okay. So if I play a6, okay, well, what do you play? What's the plan? What's the plan? Give me, give me options here as black here. Okay, b6 is one option. What else? Of course, we can just take it, right? Okay. And after bishop takes rook d8, I still play g3, okay, just to control all the squares, right? And now rook here. Here, 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 here. Okay. So remember, I'm just creating a pass pawn. That is the objective here for white. Creating a pass pawn because these pieces are in disarray. They don't understand how to deal with this position. Okay. Okay, cool. Okay. So, but technically speaking, by the way, B6 is bad for black. That is what he played as well, by the way. A6 was played, and B6 was played. The problem with B6 is that now you give me a pass pawn. Okay. And black's pieces are going to always have to keep an eye on that pass pawn. Which means that they now cannot go forward and find nice, good, aggressive attacking squares because they are focused on the defense. And that's a good thing for white. If your pieces are clamped down defending things, then that is definitely a good thing for white. So the a6 pawn becomes a big nuisance for black here. Okay. Now z fox, white continues with f4. Okay. Taking away the square from the bishop. Okay. Defending the square. <laughs> that's, that's very true, Moopy Pie Loopy. You know, it's like a big fat elephant out there. Lacos pieces now are tied down. You mean black, probably? Yeah, <laughs> that was cool. I was like Lacos. Exactly, exactly, Angelic Jake. Exactly. Okay. B takes B seven here. No, 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 no. Uh, Danny Blitz. No, it's it's only on passant. Okay, okay. I'm gonna show this to you on passant now. Okay, I'll show you an example of on passant. If white played here, and black played here. There's a couple of rules for en passant to work. Okay. En passant, your pawn, the guy who is taking en passant, okay, has to be on the fifth rank if you're white, or if you were black, then it would have to be on the fourth rank. Okay. Then the next thing that you want to know about en passant is that the pawn moving next to your pawn has to move two squares. Okay. So you have to be on the fifth rank, and the pawn moving needs to move two squares. 
now that it has moved two squares, you can ampersand it. Okay. Okay, does that help you, Danny Blitz? So the pawn that is taking the ampersand has to be on the fifth rank, and the pawn that it will take has to move two squares next to it. Or if it was here, it would have moved two squares here, and you would be able to attack both ways. It is a weird rule, yes. It is a slightly weird rule. Okay. But like I say, just remember the pawn has to be on the fifth rank, and the pawn needs to move two squares for it to be an ampersand. Okay. That's pretty much it. That's the gist of it. Okay. So the game continues after f4. He plays rook e8. I'll show you if he takes here, then just takes. And if you play here to blockade, then rook a to d1. Of course, we can use our rooks now here because that pawn is controlled still by the queen. Okay. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. That is the simplified version of a Danny Bliss. It's only on percent if the pawn moved two squares and is now next to your pawn. Okay. So you can only on percent when the person has played his pawn two squares. Okay. And you can only do it immediately, Danny Blitz. If you don't do it immediately and you move something else, like an example, again, sorry. Sorry, guys. I just want to show him the example properly here. If he plays f5 and you move something else, okay, then you can't on percent anymore. Okay. Now, let's say he plays here. You can't do it. Okay. As you can see, I am unable to on percent anymore. So you have to do it immediately when the pawn moves two squares next to your pawn. Then you can ampers on. Okay. Okay, so rook e8. And now e5 gets played. So again, controlling all the squares. Okay, these pieces are trapped beyond belief. Why does it look bad for white? It looks great for white. You want to look at this takes? You say pawn takes, pawn takes. Then rook moves out of the way, of course, right? Okay. But like I say, after rook d1, let's say, I don't even know what you play. I attack here, right? Now what do you play? It's just, it's becoming so ugly. <laughs> hey Bakus. Okay. Exactly, JC. Black's pieces are getting absolutely suffocated. You play, let's say, here. Okay. They're just continuously getting pressured. Okay. Now I can probably even play B5, C5, and C4. Uh, C4 and C5. Yes. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right, because you probably have to try and sacrifice a piece somewhere. Okay. So that is what would happen if he takes. But he doesn't. He plays rook e8. And now e5 closes up the position nicely here. Okay. Okay, turkey farm. See you later, probably. Now he plays knight a7. Sorry, knight a7. And now b5 gets played. Just clamping down more squares. Okay. The bishop obviously can't get out, so... All the squares are covered. So all the access squares are covered. Okay. This is really, really sad. So how does black continue? I mean, black played bishop d8. <laughs> For a lack of good squares. How does white continue in this position? Let's see if you guys can spot it all now. Let's see if you guys can spot the rest here. White just needs to open up the position now. For his rooks, right? The rooks are now the next important piece. Not quite yet, Z Fox. Not quite yet. Because attacking on the king is not that easy yet. Hey, Chesky. <laughs> JC, you, you feel like this is this is your typical position. There is a small problem with your idea, Z Fox. I can play here and play here. 
This is annoying because then you're going to have to, uh, you know, defend the C3 pawn. Mr. Risu, Mr. Reese, what's up? Welcome to the show. By the way, for you new guys, Mr. Reese, guys like you guys, do me a big favor and give me a follow on Twitch as well. So follow the channel on Twitch. Okay, I like I like C4 ideas, but you obviously want a little bit of backup as well. Okay, so how do we back up the C4 idea? Aha, Z Fox, here we go. Uh, Chesky, no, it's not a fortress. We just play Rook C1 and C4. <laughs> That's that's the simple way of going about this, okay? We just go simple chess here. Okay. No need for us to go nutty. We're just going to play C4 and break open the position here. Then his file is not strong. Thanks, Mr. Reese. Thanks for the follow. So, yeah, so C4 is the idea. You can put this rook here as well eventually if you want to. Okay. Danny Blitz, uh, you know, sadly things just went the wrong way. Hey, Modern Game Network. Black could play his knight to f5, but what does it accomplish? Modern Game Network, what does that accomplish? I just play g4. You know what I mean? Your knight still has no good squares. Nowhere really good to go to. So the knight on f5 doesn't do much. I can always just chase it away with g4. Okay. Then it's going to have to go backwards. Because if it's going to go here, it's looking for a lot of trouble as well. Okay. So the knight on f5, unfortunately, doesn't accomplish anything. Yeah, and at g7, what's it doing at g7? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> okay. The piece really doesn't help anything on g7. Do you want to open up your king? Okay, please. Please do. Please open up your king. The problem is modern game network is that all of your pieces are stuck on this side of the board. They're all stuck on this side of the board. So opening up your king is a bad idea, man. Bad idea. <laughs> yeah, so rook c8. Okay, Liam Ches, exactly. Good. Why rook c8, Liam Ches? Why did you want to play rook c8? Hey, Termodox, what's up? Welcome to the show, Termodox. If you want to do me a big favor and you're enjoying the show, give me a follow on Twitch as well. Follow the channel on Twitch. I'm trying to build up the numbers, boys and girls, so that I can get partner status with Twitch as well. How is our stats looking today? It's still quite quiet, right? Yeah, it took a little bit of time for us to warm up to a decent amount of number of viewers. So to all of you guys who are watching right now, okay, I do a lot of educational stuff like this. And if you want to do me a big, big favor, just follow me on Twitch as well. Okay, good, Liam Chess. That's a, that's a solid enough reason. Okay, that's a solid enough reason. I like that reasoning, Liam Chess. Okay, but there's also a trick here. There's also a trick here. White plays c4. Now things get a little messy. That's that's probably true, um, modern gamer. But again, what does the bishop do on h4? It does nothing. It does absolutely nothing. There is nothing for white to have to worry about with the bishop on h4, okay? And the bishop is needed here, by the way, because if this file opens, then I'm going to be able to en enter here. So the bishop, unfortunately, is very important to defend this and this. Okay. So again, this bishop getting out here does nothing for his position. Really doesn't help at all. So you can try it, of course, but you know, in the long in the long scheme of things, unfortunately, it's going to do nothing. It's going to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> Sadly. Sadly, it won't do anything. Uh, rook c5 is interesting. But after takes on d5, things get a little ugly. Maybe. Maybe rook c5 is interesting, yeah. Maybe we can try and hold this. Ha! 
How do we continue if rook c5? It wasn't played, by the way. That's a very good question. And how would that have helped? How does the bishop on b... How is the bishop on b8 any better than bishop on d8? Okay, modern game network. Yeah, Z Fox, everything is super bad. Let's be honest here. Everything looks super bad. How would we continue as white here, though? You can't double your rooks if your rook is stuck here, uh, modern gamer. If you played your bishop here, your rook would have still stuck, would have been stuck on a8. Then you would never get that rook out as well. So, no, it wasn't exactly that easy to do, you know? It wasn't all that simple, unfortunately. Rook c5 looks like an interesting move, by the way, but I think we could also just slow play this as white. Uh, I could possibly even play queen e3 now with the idea of taking, or maybe queen f2, sorry, queen f2, with the idea of taking and then take, and then queen takes. That's also true, uh, Z Fox. You also have ideas of maybe just playing rook here, rook here, right? <laughs> and just building up on it. Like here, here, queen here, here, mate. I mean, there's multiple options that white can try. Okay. Yeah, Z Fox, we're going to do that eventually. He didn't play rook c8, though. He played the tricky, tricky move here. He played pawn takes. There's a good reason, though, why. Let's see if you guys can figure out why. So how does white continue now? And you have to be careful because of rook c5 now. Okay, JC. Uh, if rook takes, bishop takes? Now what? Yeah, rook c8. Knight, let's say... Okay, wait, sorry. Bishop takes here. Queen takes. And knight takes here. How do we continue? So, yeah. What's the next move here? Completely clamping down all of black's pieces, which is disgusting. Exactly. Queen d7 at the end of this, yeah. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. Okay. And black is just losing. After rook f8. Okay, okay, I'll go back, I'll go back, I'll go back. So here, why would black be losing? What's black losing here? This is what happened in the game, by the way, as well. Bishop takes b5 is what happened in the game. After rook c4, of course. What do you want to look at, uh, Liam Chess? Come on, make it fast, make it fast, quick, quick, quick. This middle game lesson has gone on for longer than it's supposed to. <laughs> Not that it matters, of course. Give me a full variation if you want, Liam Ches. Okay, you're taking too long. When you're ready, maybe I can go back to it. Rook takes c8, and then bishop takes here, and then what? Your queen's hanging, so, you know, careful. And, of course, if you take here... No, if you take here, it takes back. No, 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 no. 
No, 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 no. So that wouldn't work. That would not work, uh, Liam Ches. Because now you have to move the queen. I guess even, even if you pin him, then at least his pieces are suddenly active. Okay. The pieces are suddenly active. This pawn is going to push now. Black is looking definitely much better than he was looking. Yeah. Looking a lot better than he did. Looking a lot better than he did. Okay. So now it's still equal. Still have the three pieces. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, somebody is saying about a sacrifice or something? Here, you can't take here because then, of course, that would defend the pawn on B B5. So, so you can't take here because I just take. And now, of course, I have two defenders. Okay. So that's why rook takes C C4 works. Bishop takes is not good because of rook C5 now. One, two, three. Three pieces attacking B5. Okay, now you're helping him to get free from this nonsense. Because next he's going to play bishop here and rook here. Okay, so he's going to slowly, slowly build this up. Okay. So yeah, rook takes c4 is correct. And of course, this is what happened. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. I see what you mean. Yeah, you're thinking that he could take here as well. And here. That's what you're thinking. But this this still looks pretty good as well, I think. Because let's say I just go, well, okay, maybe it's okay for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see what you're saying, Z Fox. Yeah, this could be interesting as well. You're probably right. Because like, let's say we play something like Rook here. You take, I don't know, you play Rook takes, I play B5 and check, you know? And suddenly again, all Black's pieces come alive. You know what I mean? They all suddenly come alive. Like, let's say you go here, you go check, he goes here, I go rook. And suddenly all black's pieces are alive again, you know? But going to be suddenly a great position for black to play. Okay. Nice. Okay. So, but anyway, white played rook takes c4, of course. Bishop takes, 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 and queen d8. d7, I mean. And now, boom. He plays, boom. And there he goes. So now, how do we continue? That's that's true as well, Z Fox. But yeah, you know what I mean, Z Fox. Of course, it's just good for black. That looks pretty good for black. Well, it looks a hell of a lot better than it has looked so far for black, right? So yeah, so that would be perfectly good. Is it dark outside or something? It feels like it's dark outside. <laughs> it is dark outside. Ooh, guys, we might get some more rain. <gasps> There's hope. There is hope, people. There is hope for rain. I want all of you to do a little rain dance for me now. Okay, must I do a rain dance for you guys? I think it's time for a rain dance. Huh? A little... Dit, 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 dit. I need to get my little little shakers. I need to do some sort of rain dance, boys and girls. Because we need some rain, man. This place is dying of drought. We need rain. Okay, by the way, I posted a link from chess.com. I got for my game on Discord. Not sure that's a proper link or if I should... No, no, that's fine. You can, you can post the link from chess.com. Yeah. Danny Blitz, that's cool. That's not a problem because I can obviously just go and get it. It's not an issue. I can even put it in Lee Chess because I can just copy the PGN. So don't worry. It's all good. So everybody's saying Rook C1. Okay. Now, Rook C1 does look very nice, doesn't it? But Rook C1 runs into this because of this. Which should save black once again. Okay. There is even possible stuff like this as well. Which is a bit annoying. So this might still be okay for black. Black might be able to untangle himself in this situation. It's not going to be easy. But he might be able to. Because after this check. You know if you get the right opportunity. You'll play this and this idea. So yeah. Z Fox, you're finally on the right track, right? G4. The time is right. Hey M Singer. Sorry about last night, M Singer, and thanks for the for the for the for the two-month resub, by the way. Thank you so much. 
Exactly, Z Fox. But now the time is right, Z Fox, because he can't move anything. You know what I mean? It takes him too much time to move anything. Okay, they can't move. Okay, this doesn't help now anymore. You don't care about the check. Your queen just stays here and keeps everything under wraps. Okay, so now is the perfect time to attack the king. That's it. You're just gonna play f5, and what the hell is he gonna do about it? Good luck. Good luck stopping about that. Thanks, M Singer. So yeah, so g4. I mean, what does black play? I dare you to move. I dare you to move, children. So M Singer, I have I have another job for you, M Singer. Your next job is to uh, to do a rain sing for us. You have to sing about rain because we need rain. And it and it's quite dark outside. Um, it's it's looking very cloudy, so we need some rain. <laughs> yeah, Z Fox, that's actually a very, very good analogy. Very, very good analogy. Well done. You are completely right. That stupid fly just won't leave your food alone, right? So what does black play here? Okay, good. There we go, Mr. Reese. So let's try it. Bishop here, right? We go f5, rook d8, and queen c7. As I pointed out, uh, sadly, it doesn't really help because, again, the queen is still attacking everything. Huh? Everything. And keeping an eye on that square as well. So now you're just, you know, how the hell do you survive this? I mean, you're in so much trouble here, it's not even funny. He's threatening f6 now because, of course, the queen is attacking that, so you can't move. Yes, make it rain, I'm saying, make it rain. Make it rain. Come on. Sing us a song. Sing us the rain song. I don't know. What the hell, man? I'm doing the, the rain dance. You, you have to do the rain song, okay? Because you're a singer. <laughs> okay, so yeah, so that would be an idea, Mr. Reese. But unfortunately, it just it fails miserably anyway. Okay, so he tries b5, by the way. That's what he played. Play b5. f5 happens anyway. Bishop goes check. And bam. King goes to h1, of course. Safety. There's no diagonal issues. He plays pawn takes e5, and after pawn takes, he tries to play g5. How do we continue? Yeah, that's the one, Z Fox. We want that one. We don't mind the 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 um, thunder as well. We don't mind as long as it rains. As long as it rains. And it was such a beautiful day, by the way. It was so hot today, and still very hot. But uh, I'm surprised that it's all cloudy and stuff. I just suddenly realized that it's very dark outside. So how do we continue here? What's the quick way of killing killing him softly? Or loudly, I don't know, it doesn't matter. Yes, we don't, okay, well... Um, hmm. I guess h4 works as well. Queen d2 as well. He plays a very important move here. He plays f6 first, by the way. Plays f6 first. Okay, note that that's covered. That's covered, that's covered, that's covered. So the pieces can't get in here anywhere. So he played f6 because of queen f5. So f6 is also perfectly fine. And e6 is on tap as well. So yeah, so f6 is a very, very strong move. Player played rook d8. And after queen f5, of course, simple mates everywhere all over the show. Exactly, Z, Z, JC, exactly. H6 gets played to defend the pawn. And now E6, of course. G, G. Yeah, F6 is amazing, but it's a standard move, right? We just, we, we completely trap the king in there. We cover a lot of extra squares so his pieces can't go anywhere. And of course, our queen goes to F5. And then we play E6, yeah. I mean, there's no real defense here. He tried to play Rook F8. But after E7... He's completely screwed. <laughs> and he resigned here. Because if rook here, he just goes here. So you'll have to lose material now. Don't have much of a choice. You have to play here. I just take it. Now that's hanging. And obviously, you know, I'm going to play black here and here as well. So a fairly, fairly simple win in the end. So all white did the whole game was just clamp down, clamp down, keep on clamping. And once he had complete control over the pieces, he attacked on the king side. Okay. 
Yeah, that's it. Nice little thorn in our side. Okay, so let me quickly just shovel over here to the coach's corner again. And we will just quickly recap at what... Uh, I will do that real quick. Uh, I will do that just now for you, Mr. Reese. Just give me a quick second here. So just a quick recap over here about the overview of what are the things we want to look at when we want to have three pieces versus a queen. Okay, so it's a very specific lesson. It's about three pieces versus a queen. When is it good? When is it bad? It's good in most middle games as long as the pieces have activity and something to attack. Okay, it's also very useful if the pieces have a play coordinating piece, i.e. a rook or a queen, to help them maneuver around as well. Okay, so those are the things that we want to look at. And like I said, the tip of today, for, for situations where you're looking at material imbalances, is that you don't just want to look at the material from a black and white point of view. Okay, you want to look at what the pieces are actually doing in the position. Okay, a knight can be worth more than a rook if the knight is on a fantastic square and is doing a lot more than the rook and the rook is stuck in the corner. Then the knight is obviously worth more than the rook in the current position. Okay. Let me quickly go back over to the middle game session here. You want me to show you Pontex E6. Uh, Pontex E6. There is just mate here, I think. Woo! Uh, okay, maybe just this way, huh? Can we go check this way? I guess he can still hide here. And uh, we go check this way. King goes here. Maybe we just take here check. King goes here. <laughs> it's like check I mean it doesn't really matter we will just win material in the end right so it seems to be fairly simple I don't think we have to do anything fancy because he's going to have to lose his rook now so if there's no mate I mean we just win a lot of material okay okay cool Mr. Reese I'm glad you enjoyed that so again let me just mention to you guys if you're new to the show and you're currently not following me on Twitch do me a big favor and give me a follow on Twitch uh, give me a quick second. I'm just going to change over to tactics now because we are going to continue on. But I'm going to move over to tactics. So just give me a quickie, a quick second 